Good morning. Uh, we just shot again with Mr. Chris Perillo. I've been shot. Yeah. Bang, bang. Good reaction. It's not raining right it's now. Not rain it, it was. It was actually raining and cloudy and misty all morning, and then the sun came out just for us. Ah. Second. Ah. Yeah. Wow, not used to it. Um, he gave us a sneak peek at the venue for Vlogger Fair for the documentary. What? Behind these... Closed doors. Which closed door, door would you pick? Garage door number seven doors. <laughs> um, 22. What's behind uh, door 22? A whammy. Okay. <laughs> now, I already know, but give me the quick, explain it like I'm five, pitch. What is Vlogger Fair? Vlogger Fair is an event, a series of activities for vloggers, or people who want to start vlogging, or people who loves, uh, love to watch vlogs, which is probably most of your audience. Uh, it's not a conference, but uh, an event where we're going to foster collaboration, communication, and conversation, and creation. Sweet. It's a lot of shins. It almost feels like an old school YouTube gathering before the big stages and the big... Trains. Quiet, please. Thank um, you. It's kind of like a VidCon or a Playlist Live, but without the scheduling and the big stages, it's more just the hanging out in the hallways, which yeah. is a lot of people's favorite time anyways. Uh, and that's going to be in Seattle June 8th and 9th. Mm -hmm. And it definitely doesn't take away from the other events. No. Absolutely not. No. It comp if anything, totally complimentary. Yeah. Trust me, I want more YouTube gatherings. Playlist Live and VidCon are like my favorite times of the year. It's like Christmas for YouTubers, so to have another one of those in between is also awesome. And there's one in uh, you know the LA area, one in Florida, so there's one in Seattle, so someone needs to do one in New York City. Well, we're close to the Canadian border, you know. Yeah, yeah. so a lot of people from British Thanks. Columbia, Vancouver, yep. come on down. It's just Seattle, and uh, so we'll link to that in the description. If you guys want to go to Vlogger Fair, we're going to be there, and there's going to be a lot of YouTubers there. I know Charles and Ali are going, Prank vs. Pranks going, Shea Carl's going. Um, You're filming the documentary We're going to film some of the documentary there, so you should, uh, if, if you want to go to Seattle and hang out, and maybe you can't make it to VidCon for whatever reason, if Seattle's easier, uh, go to Vlogger Fair. We're going to a museum full of smart things and such. Come on now. <laughs> oh, Sam. You don't want to go to a museum? Sam, just... Sam, just be smart. Tim, 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 look at that. Look at that. Look at that thing. Look at it. Hey, okay. look, it's like almost... Look how big it is. It's what is that? Big. That's this Space Needle. It's almost big. Is that the, oh, is that the museum big. replica of the Seattle Space Needle? Because no. that has to be considerably smaller than what I thought the actual Space Needle was going to be. Is that... Was, was that supposed to be an insult? That was so long... No, it's just people wouldn't be excited about a building that small. It's so big! <laughs> look how big it is! Most buildings really in Niagara Falls big. are bigger than that. I think the, the actual... tower is probably like eight of those. Maybe three. Let's, yeah, probably let's go three. see the... Space Needle, I guess. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Seattle, I love you. So we're going into the museum and we're going to check out this Iron Throne that is here on display from Game of Thrones. As well, Alex just informed me that there's actually a Nirvana exhibit, uh, exhibit I guess. Yeah, yeah we're going to a museum called the Experience Music Project, which has a bunch of really cool music stuff. I know that you like Nirvana, so I told you about that, but they have a cool sci-fi museum as well, which I'm really excited about because there's a bunch of stuff from Doctor Who and there's uh, the... I was going to say the Doctor Who thing! I was waiting to say the Doctor Who the whole time! I was just going to say, I'm really excited to learn about all these electromagnetic pulses I'm going to learn about. Yeah. yeah. All pulses! The I'm excited down. for pulses! Where are you? I am yeah. at the EMP, which is a museum, and yeah. I am... Um, I, yeah, I'm in, I'm in King's Landing. <laughs> what?! I'm on the Iron Throne. You're sitting on the throne right now? It's not very iron. <laughs> Look at the selfie. <laughs> how'd, it, how'd it turn out? It's great. It's great? <laughs> Let's show the camera. <laughs> Everyone wants to see. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's awesome. That is a That's great really photo. <laughs> yeah, guys, come on. Who's in there? You going in? I, Everyone's got to take a turn. We all have to take a turn. Which house are you representing? House of Idel. <sighs> Sit up straight. You're a king. I, yeah, but Joffrey's always kind of like, just like playing with his finger. <laughs> just like everyone die. I hate all of you. <laughs> I hate me. I hate mom. <laughs> Poor Joffrey. He's been through so much. I'm on Team Joffrey. <laughs> what? You can't even finish saying it. You can't even say it with a straight face. This is good. So this really is like all swords. Kind of. Sort of. It's like swords that are not actual swords. I can swords. swing my sword, sword. You know you're in Seattle when, for your convenience and safety, smart umbrella bags. So when you show up and it's like pouring rain outside, you which bring it is your all umbrella, the which it is, we're in Seattle, you, you put your umbrella in a bag and then you won't get the whole museum wet. That's such a smart idea. So they've got all kinds of cool costumes and stuff on display. They have stuff from the Wizard of Oz, uh, which is pretty neat because that's definitely 
very, very old. And over here, they have stuff from the Princess Bride. I feel like you would be Inigo Montoya. Oh, yeah. Thanks, I guess. I always saw myself more as a, like a Wesley type figure, but yeah, I could be an Inigo Montoya what? with this beard. I've got to say, I don't know if I have ever seen it, but maybe once a month, maybe once every other month, I'll just get a random tweet from someone saying, watching The Princess Bride, Wesley looks like Corey Vidal, or vice versa. Actually, Ian from Smosh once just tweeted at me randomly, like, watching Princess Bride thinking of you. So, um, so that's my costume there. And that's uh, if I was really attractive and had a nice mustache. And Corrado would be, uh, who's the guy? Corrado would Gilbert be an Egon Montoya. <laughs> what? No, Corrado would be the annoying guy. Okay, are we just saying going on looks? No, personality. Like, you don't think that Corrado would be the super loyal Spaniard? No, he'd be <laughs> like, the like... <laughs> that's Corrado. I don't know. I don't Maybe, you think he would be Vizzini? Yeah, yeah. Vizzini, yeah. That's who he was saying. I, I think, think you guys so. see yourselves very differently than you are. I would see myself as Buttercup. <laughs> well then, try it, try on your dress. And this is what Tim Deegan would wear. And he would actually be able to pull it off. It's uh, David Bowie in Labyrinth. Okay, so I found the most exciting costume in this entire building. This serious black coat, cloak thing that he wears in Azkaban when he's running around in the third movie. And he's all grungy and gross and stuff. And there's his other half. Right there. I want to give a shout out to my friend actor Doug Jones who was actually in the vlog at VidCon 2012. He's a tall skinny guy who is a professional actor in Hollywood, also a mime actor. He's in a lot of things, uh, just look him up on IMDb. He played this and he actually wore this exact thing, like that's the real mask that he wore in the movie Pan's Labyrinth. So Doug, I'm thinking of you. Science fiction asks big weird questions, got that right. Let's travel through space. Let's do it. They have a pretty sweet science fiction exhibit, which I care about more than fantasy. Oh, this is Neo's outfit from The Matrix Reloaded. That's pretty cool. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Oh, yes? Oh, yes. This is the actual Darth Vader lightsaber prop from The Empire Strikes Back. There's original drawings of Darth Vader by Ralph McQuarrie. There's uh, me, <laughs> just a drawing of me. Looking pretty cool. In the pivotal scene of the final Star Wars film, Luke Skywalker removes his father's helmet so that a dying Anakin Skywalker can look at his son with his own eyes for the first and last time. That's pretty crazy. That's so cool. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. That's one of my favorite pieces here, I think. That's, this is 30 years old. Oh man, this is Yoda's cane from The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and his little necklace, his penchant. Pendant? He has a penchant for wearing pendants, though. <laughs> pendant! Pendant! Here's Tim Deegan's pajamas. <laughs> yeah. That's what Tim Deegan should just wear all the time. No, because I just made fun of this guy in Alex's vlog, and that's not cool. Oh, if you knew come what on. I said, if you knew what I said. You gotta watch I'm not that I made fun of Superman, I just made fun of this mannequin. Why? Well, it doesn't look very super down there, does it? You got a green cloak? That's cool. That's Rawr. <laughs> Rawr. Chasing you. Rawr. Rawr. Hang on, let me get a. Uh... They're are compositing we, are, it with the are green. Are we in space? Screen. Yeah, you're Hang in space. Floating it's your space. Invisible Sam. Man, this is like the opening to Doctor Who right here. <laughs> it's definitely like the, the 1960s version of it. It looks about the same. Oh, that astronaut is impossible. You're impossible. Nah. This astronaut, this astronaut is moonwalking. <laughs> You're welcome. So I'm a pretty big fan of pretty much everything in this museum so far actually, but especially of uh, Doctor Who. And this is really cool because I have one of the old, old Daleks you can see here. The Doctor's main adversary who what are... What a piece of junk! Hey, gotta wear it counts. Broken. It is, bro it's old, it's an old Dalek. It's little guys are falling off. So what happens when you get to be an old what? Dalek and you retire to a museum, Sam? Our pets' heads are falling off! They're so much less scary when they're in a big glass box. I'm not scared you of you, just, Daleks. Like, bump into it. I'm not scared of you. You just bump into the glass. Yeah. Like a Dalek. You can't go anywhere. Like a Dalek. Like a freaking Dalek. No, Dalek. So I specifically remember the very first rated R movie I ever saw. And for me, it was Terminator 2. So when I saw this head over here, I was like, oh, that's so awesome. I don't know if you guys remember. Do you guys remember? <laughs> do you guys remember your first rated R movie? If you do, leave it in the comments below. I want to know. And I want to see how many people actually put Terminator 2. Yeah. 
That is so cool. Dude, it's like a crazy iPod commercial. Oh, yeah, nice. It's a guitar tornado. That is so cool. How many think, how many guitars do you think it is, there are in there? Five? Sam, what grade are you in? I'm gonna guess, no. I'm gonna guess nearly 700. <laughs> okay, hold on. Where's the plaque? Nearly 700 instruments. <laughs> 40 of them are custom made. Wow. So one of the cool things is that they have these sound stage rooms where you can kind of lock yourself in a room. It's 100% soundproof and you can just play guitar or drums or anything. And there's the one room which is a jam room. So let's take a look and see what you've got going on in here. So apparently this is the very first original Starbucks, like the number one back in 1912. So we're gonna see. Sorry? What are you guys filming for? Uh, our lives. Our lives? We can't film in here. I can't film our lives? Okay. So they wouldn't let us film inside because apparently a long time ago there was a documentary filmed that didn't show them in a nice light and so now they're just like, no filming. Hmm. But either way, I got a sample of coffee, which is a really good dark French press, and then I got the regular, like a nice blonde, because it's a nice sunny day. Yeah. <laughs> it was a really nice building, and I talked to them for a long time about YouTube. This is our mobile recording studio. This is our voiceover booth. Okay. I sit in here. There's just so many things wrong with this. You guys just got, <laughs> okay. There's a microphone here, mm -hmm. and my, my, uh, my tech. Oh, hey. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> That's it's like a game of cat and mouse. Where is that? Oh, there it is. Did you ever I found did you do that? It. It's cool when you're in grade school, like um, with a big parachute, and you throw it, like you flip it around, and yeah. there's like somebody underneath and somebody on top, and they have to try and find the person underneath. Fun. Cat and mouse. So you're gonna go under there with all the expensive equipment <laughs> and Sam yeah. and the C300, yeah. Yeah. and I am just gonna get on the bed <laughs> and jump. <laughs> Until I find you guys? Is so that... That's the plan right there. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna try and do the voiceover while it's all happening. All right, I'm not gonna... Okay, I want you to get under there and try the voiceover. I'm gonna try to <laughs> not move. All right, if you can keep your composure, Deegan. I'm gonna do it. All right. Hold it by the bottom. Try and find me. <laughs> uh, Alex, get off the blanket. You're... No, you get off the blanket. No, you all get right. off the blanket. Does it even sound good in there, Tim? Well, not anymore. Sound check! One, two, three! I'm doing a voiceover under a blanket! <laughs> so <laughs> professional! Give me daily vlogs I want them in my subscription box I wonder who might drop by Even though sometimes it's Canada outside so don't go away We're here every day It's not Apprentice A It's Apprentice A Hey, 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 hey,